All right, we are live at Walk-Ons, Highway 280, Greystone location, day two of the NCAA tournament. Um, all the way at the end of the table is Jim Dunaway. You see Emily Grace McWhorter, E.G., Lance Taylor, firing in some picks right here. I'm Ryan <laughs> Brown. Uh, we are watching day two of the tournament. They've just started the second half, or just about to start the second half, UAB and San Diego State. Blazers hanging in there. Um, wasn't uh, a gorgeous first half for the Blazers, but just down five at the half. Not bad for the way they played Dunaway, I don't think. Uh, no, not at all. A big push there in the final four minutes of the half, which was huge. They were down double digits and then uh, made a little push to uh, sort of give you some life going into the second half. I think UAB is in a good spot right now um, to to make this interesting. I don't think San Diego State's more athletic than they are. I just don't think UAB got off to a good start and they were playing catch up the whole first half. So I'm not uh, they're in a much better position than Samford was in at one point last night, and yep. Samford had a chance to win at the end. So I don't hate where UAB and Andy Kennedy is going to yeah. the second half here. Down, down six. Let me correct myself on this, Lance. 35-29, San Diego State leads UAB. And, I mean, it, this is one of those where it feels like I'm with Dunaway. You know, Samford dug out of a pretty deep hole. You hate to put yourself in that situation. This was one of those that feels like maybe the first – you know, before the first media timeout here, pretty important stretch of ball for UAB. Well, and UAB just can't hit a shot. They shot 32% in the first half, uh, but they are hanging around down six. Jaden Ledee, I mean, this is a guy that, uh, as advertised, 18 first half points. So he's been dominant for the Aztecs. The Aztecs love to yuck up a game. It's exactly what they're doing. But yeah, I mean, still in the arms reaches UAB. We'll see what happens in the second half. Florida had one really good game. In Northwestern and Florida Atlantic. Good um, good for you, not for some. Yeah, EG's yeah. got seven brackets, so I don't know. Eight. Eight brackets. Yeah. So was it good for any of your eight brackets, EG? So. You don't think so? I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, it was 20 to 19 at half. Yeah, it, it was. was ugly. Hot, ugly. For, we, we watched the first half while we were finishing our show live earlier, and uh, it was a terrible first half. It was impossible to watch. I, I, I look, I, I'm sorry, Lance. I looked done away. It was 16-14, two minutes to go in the half. 16-14. Yeah. I'm like, that's not basketball. That's the way Northwestern likes to play it. Back to and UAB. Uh, back uh, yeah, in Virginia. Back to UAB for a second, though. Their problem going to the second half is uh, Yax has three fouls. Coleman has three fouls. So Yax is obviously an important part of the second half. If he hits that fourth foul at some point, then it's, uh, yeah, it's a bad, bad situation to be in. Well, and then you got nobody that can battle the D. I mean, not that. You know, Yak's doing a great job with that. Yeah, I think Coleman's been on him some, and that's that's been a little bit of a problem too at times. Um, all right, let's uh, address the elephant in the room here. Troy uh, sends us a message via YouTube, Merch Madness Alert, NH3425, Western Kentucky ain't massing around, Bama Mariner about to get some free merch, Paul gives it eyeballs. Uh, guys, it's just halftime, settle down. But Western Kentucky ain't screwing around, as he said. 43-36, they lead Marquette. Dunaway, a couple weeks ago, had Marquette walking away with his yeah. trophy. He's backed <laughs> off. Yeah, <laughs> luck, backed off. luckily, I don't have him making it to the second weekend on the yeah. bracket. That, that's uh, a weird change. You went from, like, yeah. literally two weeks ago thinking they are going to win the whole thing. Now you don't even have them in the Sweet 16? No, because they, they ended up with Florida, another one of my favorite teams, on uh, opposite if they both win today. And I didn't like Florida's matchup against uh, – I didn't like Marquette's matchup against Florida. So that's when, uh, you know, basically the, the committee bailed me out on Marquette. I would have had Marquette going deep when they see the matchup. I got him winning today, obviously, against Western Kentucky, but that, this will not be a big loss for me well, if, this... if Marquette goes down. It would financially because I am part owner, part of the ownership group up here. <laughs> it's true. There, there is a, there's a hit for everybody. Yeah. This, this, this south bracket, though, is really crazy when you start to look at this and everything's going to open up for Houston or whoever comes out of that top part of the South bracket because you've already had Kentucky and Texas Tech eliminated. So we've got a 13 or excuse me, 11, 13 matchup or 11, 14 matchup with NC state and Oakland. And then on the bottom of Western Kentucky is to hold seed here uh, or hold serve. Uh, you've got them versus the winner of Florida and Colorado. So this thing really does open up for Houston. who is virtually a pick to win that region to begin with. And I'll go back to what we were talking about on the show in the first segment on, if you fired John Calipari, who would you get? Uh, how about a guy named Todd Golden? Uh, uh, we never yeah, got I back mean, to it on no, the show, you're right, you're right. but yeah, I would he, love Todd Golden at Kentucky. He, he just signed an extension, so I don't know what the buyout on that is because keep in mind, everybody's got to remember that Kentucky's going to have to pay a load to get rid of Cal. Now, you're probably not going to pay that up front. $33.4 million. Probably not going to pay $33.4 million in one check. I mean, that's uh, probably going to be a structured, we're going to pay you X amount per year. If I, if I, um, I don't know, I, I'm sure it's not Jimmy Sexton, but 
those contracts usually go half of it's due in 30 days and then it's they, a yeah it's a payment plan after that yeah a lot of them are different yeah i mean i'd take any of it wouldn't you yeah I would, 33 million <laughs> however they want to chop it up i'd love, to, I'd love nice to walk retirement yeah there. i'd love to walk to the mailbox and pick up a 16.5 million dollar check and I'd be okay with however you wanted to break it down the rest of my life at that point. What's Jimbo you could pay me making? $1 a day the rest of my life at that point. What's Jimbo out right now? What was it daily that he's making? Uh, oh, there's no telling, EG, because that was 70 yeah. something million. Yeah, that's yeah. the first headline I read this morning was um, for those of you that follow, follow college football, specifically Texas AM, this buyout figure is not going to seem as large <laughs> but in basketball terms it is yeah. 33.4 million but compared to texas a it's a it's a discount i saw somebody last night say the john calipari transformation into jimbo fisher is about to become <laughs> i mean and there are a lot of similarities well yeah. there aren't though there no, aren't there are not no I mean, they the both won a national championship totally different though how is it totally different why because he did one with one generational player in Jameis winston and that's all he ever did now do anthony davis yeah i mean what did cal do he his with played for two other national championships he took well, he umass did. to a uh, final four took took um memphis to i don't know three consecutive lead eights hey and now he's had more success i Co- will agree couple with of five Derek rose hits free throws he went to national championship there it's he is, again, I said this today, I think he has lost his edge for whatever reason. He, he's old. He's old and rich. He he can Rich coach. and old. Uh, he's not a guy that you want now, but back in the day, I mean, just go through it. How many 30-win seasons? Oh, he had a lot. Yeah, I mean, but Jimbo had like one or right. two good years. You're right. It's it's not the best comparison other than the buyout. Um, some people asking, well, NH3425 says, I've heard Shaka Smart for Michigan. Any truth? Paul says Shaka Smart is so overrated. I mean, oh, yeah. God. He's living on the 2011 yeah. Final Four where they were a play-in. Like, if they would have lost that play-in game, Shaka Smart never gets Texas job. Oh, no. He probably loses the VCU job at some point. Yeah, you're probably right. I, yeah. I don't – if I'm Michigan, I don't know who I go after if I'm Kentucky. I don't know if anybody's talking about Shaka Smart to Kentucky. Zero chance I do that. Yeah, by the way, VCU used to be a really good basketball program, but we never hear from them anymore, do we? There was yeah. a time that it was like every year – different coach would roll in and VCU was good. VCU was good. VCU was good. And then when Shaka left, they haven't really done anything. Who else. came after Shaka? I don't know, but they made the wrong hire. Oh, because uh, before that, it was, we don't talk about before him. that it was Capel and who were the other Grant. guys? Anthony, Anthony Grant, Grant was yeah. there. Uh, the, every time the VCU would make the tournament, those guys would leave and go get another job and they'd put another <laughs> great coach in there, go to the tournament, great job. New coach, go yep. to the tournament, great job. And now VCU is uh, middle of the pack. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I brought this up today with with Chris Beard at Ole Miss. And, look, there is baggage there, but the blow has been softened a little bit by Ole Miss hiring him. So you don't have to take that initial PR hit. You're going to take some. But if I'm a big-time program, I want to make sure that you get a guy that can win, and Chris Beard can win. Yeah, but I would tell you, I mean, I understand what the charges were, but the charges were dropped. Um, there was somebody's some, hired him since then. Yeah. Well, yeah. She, somebody's she hired said him that since she then. falsified yeah. the whole thing. That's right. But, I, then I think they, but I think they broke up though. Didn't they they? Did. I, yeah. I trust me when I tell you that I hear more of a cloud still over DJ Durkin. Yeah. Than well, I do over Chris yeah. Beard. Well, God, I, I, was, I was in Nashville and, and the Chris Beard situation at Texas was not brought up one time. I did not really? hear it. It was not a storyline at all, but DJ Durkin. Yeah. I'm doing a press conference in Auburn. Oh my gosh, I was there. Oh, I I know. And I was sitting at that table. Was that as awkward as it felt? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it was, that was. You could hear a pin drop, and I. I, I thought it was bad around. on the first question, but then you follow well, you, it up. That the the initial hit was like, whoa, that yeah. just changed this whole energy. Yeah, yeah. and then the second one was like, I'm ready to go. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought the third one, if they allowed him to do a third one, was going to be, why don't you ever say his name? Say his name. Woo! Oh. God, no, no, that, that was the one. That was. That, that was the I only mean, thing you were waiting on. That yeah. was, and there's the only thing left in that questioning. And that was DJ Durkin. How many jobs removed? Uh, uh, Chris Beard doesn't oh. get that question. Well, ever, he's, ever. he has since been an analyst at Alabama for a minute. Uh, uh, defensive coordinator at Ole Miss, defensive coordinator at Texas A&M. Now defensive coordinator at Auburn. So yeah. at least three, four jobs removed. And I assume, how you want to count an analyst role. And I assume every opening news conference, he has to address that well, I would at imagine. some point. Yeah. And, and Chris Beard, I, I just don't hear that uh, about him anymore. You know, Georgia Southern's old head coach is now with Coach Beard at Ole Miss as an analyst. Oh, Brian Burke. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. And he was that? with him at Texas Tech. So VCU, to uh, bring yeah. this full circle. <laughs> You know, he, yes. it, Kevin Bacon is Georgia Southern. I know. Georgia Southern is Kevin Bacon. <laughs> you can tie it back. Yeah, everything is Kevin Bacon. Every, everything is seven degrees of, of Georgia Southern. So ECU went Jeff Capel, 
for four years. Yep. He took – he went to straight to Oklahoma from there. Is that right? Uh, Pittsburgh or the way around? Oklahoma and then Pittsburgh? Uh, I got it right here. VCU yeah. straight to Oklahoma. So he took the Oklahoma job. He did well enough to get the Oklahoma job. They then had Anthony Grant, who did well enough to get the – Alabama job. Correct. Um, God, everybody thought that was a great hire too. It had its moments. They then had Shaka Smart, who did well enough to get the Texas, Texas job. job. They had – everybody forgets this one. Will Wade. Oh, wow. Yeah, he did well yeah. enough to yeah. get, uh, got the LSU job. That's who followed Shaka. I did not know that. Mike Rhodes followed Will Wade, and that's the Penn State head coach right now. Oh, he does pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to see what he did at VCU, though, Jim. Uh, two rounds, of, three rounds of 64. I mean, look, in, in his one, two, three, four, five, six seasons, um, he went to the round of 64. So... I mean, that's three out of – I don't know what you expect out of VCU. He was there 50% of the time. Yeah, I would say every other year is about right. Yeah, that's what he did. Ryan Odom is the guy that is there now. And um, UAB's getting foul trouble, boys. He, yep. he came from Utah State. All right, so UAB's in foul trouble. It's yeah. 35-29, just about two minutes into the half. So what, da- what's happened, Dunaway? Davis, Coleman, and Lindenberg now have three, and that's about to be four on Davis, I oh, believe. No. And two offensive rebounds for San Diego State is not helping. Either. Well, that's uh, what happens when your big guys are in foul trouble, right? right. They don't go to the yeah. boards aggressively. Here we go. Here comes Yaks. This will be the game for UAB the next next five minutes or so. So Yaks did not start the half because he had three fouls. And boy, you can see it on AK's face. He knows this is a, a dangerous situation. Yep. Yeah, it could get, a, get out of hand pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. 35-29. UAB is trailing and is in serious foul trouble, including their star player, the defensive player of the year in the league, uh, Yendel, uh, 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 Yaxel, Yaxel London, Lindenberg. Mm. Boy, somebody has said it better than that, I promise you. <laughs> yeah, or we just call him Snacks, with, snacks, snacks with, with the Axe. Snacks with the Axe. Yeah. Um, the axe get in there, baby. Boom. Troy says uh, UAB has hit a three. Troy says if uh, Kentucky were smart, and they aren't, Will Wade would make a good hire. I don't know. Yeah. That, that, that feels like a bad fit to me. I yeah. think he can coach, though. I think he can coach. Yeah. But if you're going to go Will Wade, I mean, look, different kind of baggage. Um, I I just – I think Chris Beard <laughs> – But, you know, we heard earlier today Brad Stevens. If you get Brad Stevens out of the front office, I just don't know if he's got the burn. Yeah, I don't know. Anymore. See, I, I wonder how much that drives him, what he's doing with the Celtics. He seems happy with it, but – I mean, I just don't see – and look, everybody's everybody is programmed differently. But I don't see how you go from the adrenaline rush of coaching in a Final Four or coaching for the Boston Celtics. I don't guess he ever coached in anybody final, right, with the Celtics. But, you know, how you go from that to sitting in a front office, how you replace mm-hmm. that adrenaline rush. I just don't see how a competitive guy does that. I know there's a competitive nature to being a general manager as well, but it just does not seem like the same competitive nature. Yeah, it's different for sure, but maybe it's a better life, you know? Yeah. Maybe he's able to take his laptop and go home and watch the kids play Little League baseball or swimming and such, and you don't have to be at a game every night. You or just you're you, trading different kinds of stress yeah, in a way. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, man. A lot more I, math in the front office uh, than it is. No doubt about that, yeah. I, I'm going to guess that Brian Dutcher is 57-58, but that guy can coach now. Are you talking about at Kentucky or Michigan? Uh, I'm just oh, talking got about the Michigan all background. Over. Yeah, and Michigan is no. not. They have not been afraid to hire older when they went with Beeline. Oh. Yeah. But Dutcher, if they make a little run in this tournament based on the fact they played for the national championship last year, I mean, Dutcher's a guy that could get some looks. Dutcher was with Steve Fisher at Michigan, or did he just join him at San Diego State? Uh, I, I don't really remember. Yeah, let me check. Yeah, I mean, if he's got that history, which just being attached to Steve Fisher is a history. Andy Kennedy coaching up Yaks going to the break. They are now down 10. I mentioned before that first media timeout was uh, big time for them. They did not even make it to that media timeout. AK had to burn one. Tough yeah. spot right now for uh, the Blazers yeah. down 10. Yeah, you've watched this program um, for a few months now at UAB. Isn't it a fun little program? It is. It is yeah. a fun little program. Yeah, and Andy's such AK, a great guy. Yeah. yeah. I, like, I, of course, appreciate his – that he wears yeah uh, he's got a he's got a fashion sense yeah. Yeah. there's no doubt about that what was he best dress coach one year yeah I mean, we lance brought it up in an interview i don't know the uh publication that did it but i think the publication named him best dress coach when he was uh back at old miss uh actually i think it was already when he was at uab oh really they yeah. he, he's been in a uh because his first year was um pandemic i don't think he's been in a coat and tie since no but this was about his shoes i think it was oh, okay. about his shoes and okay. he told lt what kind of shoes they were i don't remember but I think Lance uh, priced them out at uh, over a thousand oh, for yeah. a pair of shoes. Yeah. Do you remember what they were? Uh, if you give me a second, yeah, I'll you don't remember. Have to worry about um, that. All right, so Brian Dutcher, he's older than I thought. 
I mean, he's 64 years old. And here's the thing, going back to Michigan, he was on the bench in 89 with Steve Fisher. Won the national See, that's what I'm there. asking. I didn't know if yeah. he was with Fisher in Michigan. So, so he does have that Michigan connection, Dutcher does. Yeah, when, when Fisher left in 2007, were retired, he took over the San Diego well, State. Well, I'm telling you what, if I'm Michigan, that's my call right there. I don't know if they're waiting on this guy to get bounced down away, grimaces, and shakes his head. Yeah, I mean, there was a re- there's a reason why Fisher left, though, and how he left. Do you think that, that whole coaching staff, any of them are welcome back in Ann Arbor with the money people and the boosters there? No. Fisher walked out the door. Now, you're idiots if you let that stand in the way of you hiring a guy like Brian Dutcher. A lot that, of people have a lot of pride. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a dumb hiring process there. Yep. Uh, now, I want to stress the Kentucky job is not open. Everybody in the chat room is talking about who Kentucky should hire. I want to stress John Calipari has not been fired after last night's disaster. Blake, though, is the mayor at Iowa State or Scott Drew at Baylor. That's who I go after if I'm Kentucky. Well, Scott the, Drew just signed a new deal. Yeah, the, because mayor's, he, the mayor's at Nebraska now. Yeah. Well, yeah, and he does come back and say, I mean, Nebraska. Yeah, but yeah. he's got him in the, the tournament right now. Yeah, Ty Hoops News says Hoiberg will be a good one. That's the mayor if you don't know who we're talking about there. Hoiberg makes weird decisions. I thought he would never leave Iowa State. And he goes to the Bulls. It didn't work out. It's and, a lot uh, of money, though, he got for the Bulls. He did, yeah. How yeah, much? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember, but I remember it was – I don't remember the figure, but I remember it was a substantial okay. But here, pay here's, raise. here's the deal now with, with the television contracts in college basketball, you can make just as much or almost as much. Yeah. Billy Donovan is always a popular with the fans. I think his college days probably – I don't think he wants to taint it now. He's so fondly remembered for his back-to-back national he, champions at Florida. He is, but I, I would say, Dunaway, if you're going to gamble on replicating it, Kentucky would be a place you would go. I or, mean, I don't think he's going to take some off-the-road job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but as a guy who won his national championships at Florida at the expense of Kentucky, yep. is that not uh, a tough place to go back? And um, you, you almost would be beating your old school with your name in the court. You'd be coaching Kentucky be, be in Gainesville yep. on Billy Donovan court. Uh, it'd be tricky. There's no doubt. Once they put your name on the court, it's yeah. hard to coach somewhere else. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. disagree with you. Hard to that. be the big rival. Against yeah. Them. Now, Drew, don't forget that uh, Scott Drew parlayed the Louisville opening into a contract extension at Baylor. I don't know if it included a buyout, anything similar to what Nate Oates has. So I don't know how it would slow down, uh, how much it would slow down Kentucky if they wanted to hire him. Would you like that higher if you're Kentucky, Scott Drew? Yeah, I'll, I'll, once uh, LT gives you a thought, I got a thought on that yeah, one too. Yeah, look, so Scott Drew was a guy that I was I was campaigning for Alabama before Nate. No, before yeah. Anthony Grant. Anthony. Or, no, or was it uh, Avery Johnson? No, it was before. Okay. So All Grant right. was before Johnson, right? Yep. Yeah, it was Grant. Uh, anyway, Scott Drew is a hell of a coach. You think about what he did at Baylor taking over for Dave Bliss and the program was gone. I don't even know if you know this story. But there was Patrick Denny. He was a player, and he got murdered by a teammate, and Dave Bliss covered it up. Yeah, and they had him on uh, audio recording covering it up. So they ended up – you guys got to give me some context to this. Uh, I think Lance just did. Yeah, I forgot the the whole story, but there was some kind of uh, domestic dispute between these two players, and one of them killed the other one, and he had some kind of information behind it. Kind of buried it. Um, and somebody recorded him trying to convince players to tell other players that this guy was a bad apple, bad yeah, dude, yeah, just yeah, basically yeah. trash him. Wow. So essentially was, I mean, very close to uh, interfering in a police investigation. I mean, he's lucky he probably maybe he didn't get tried or do so, some time. So, yeah, the university obviously gets in the middle of this, and they basically – so when, when Scott Drew took the program over, they – they didn't have a non-conference schedule. They just went straight into Big 12 play, and they were awful. And he single-handedly built one of the best programs in college basketball that won a national championship wow. just three years ago. So he can really, really coach. Now, some people have suggested that maybe the NCAA EG turned a blind eye to let him recruit outside yeah. the, the lines. So I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. But, see, I don't worry about that anymore. Like, if anybody I, – I would say this about Will Wade. I wouldn't hire him if I'm Kentucky or Louisville. But I might if I'm Louisville, but I wouldn't hire him if I'm Kentucky. But anybody done away that has gotten in trouble for those kinds of things, the Adidas stuff, that yep. stuff is all – I'm not going to let that yeah. stop me from hiring somebody. That's right. I would tell you this, though. Scott Drew is a – on in the world of college athletics, we know there's a dirty side, a clean side, and a gray area yeah, in, the in the middle. Okay. Scott Drew is closer to the clean side you think of so? college athletics and the dirty side. Uh, and I don't think his his way of living life fits at Kentucky. Uh, maybe not. It's a big job. I mean, it, you yeah. can't you can't. It's a big job with a lot of uh, big money boosters that are willing to do anything to win. And uh, 
I don't think Scott Drew plays that way. I oh. think um, I don't know. I don't know that I would say of Calipari that he doesn't let the the crush of the fan base bother him. I think he's just cocky enough and ego driven enough that he can give it back. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. I would say as sleazy as Calipari looks. Yeah. Scott Drew is the other side. What is it? Is it? I always get confused. 360 just gets you right back to the yeah, same so place. It's 180. Right? He's 180, 180 of John Calipari. Scott Drew, yeah. squeaky clean perception. I don't know he, personally. He, he seems like yeah. he's got uh, clammy hands. Oh, Scott Drew. Interesting. Clammy okay. Hands. So, like, if I shake his hand, I have to wipe my pants leg. Oh, yeah. That's an int- oh, okay. You don't want to talk about the cold, no. clammy hand? Yeah, yeah I'm not yeah. a fan of that hand. Oh, ah, it's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Would but he, would you rather, rather date a guy with small hands or clammy hands? Uh, yeah, that's an impossible question to answer. I've, I've, I don't know. It's been Probably so long hand. since I've shaken Mikey's hand. Like when we see each other, we just it's give him the. We, no, we do the bro hog. Yeah. So I don't. Solid. Think, you Mikey, solid. No, I like complain when his. Like I'll be like, your hand is sweaty. Stop. How oh, tall wow. is Mikey? My height. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wait, no, wait, I was wait, just going to ask you when another did Mike, question. When did Mikey get on the? We talked a lot about. I was going to ask you: Would you rather date a guy that is seven feet tall or a guy that is five five? Seven feet, that's yes. almost too tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. you're tall. I told you you were I mean, sneaky I'm tall sneaky when I was yeah. sneaky tall. Yeah, because yeah. you're what five eight? Yeah, Lance thought I was like five four. I did because yeah. you're you're very petite yeah. for that sneaky that length. Tall. Yeah, um, yep. I would say seven feet is too tall, and then five I think five a lot of health problems. Five, that five come is with. too. Yeah, you're right. Doesn't live long. No. Seven feet doesn't live well, long. Well, how tall is Tim Elton? Uh, six, six yeah, he's nine, six, six ten. Okay, so he's safe, safe he's enough good. to live safe a lifetime. Enough, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, we won't have to really live for a very long time. But again, you're going five five, and if you, oh, you could five, five, five. five five or seven feet. Oh, seven feet. For okay, sure. I was going to say you sure. never wear heels ever. No, yeah. uh, uh-uh. I would not do five five. No, 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 no. Um, yeah. back to the Paul, sweaty Paul. hands of Mikey. <laughs> right. uh, okay, so wait, you're going to you're going to hold it against a guy who has probably got sweaty hands wow. because he it's loves you so much working hard that he gets like nervous when he's around you still no. and still finds you extremely attractive no. and his hands gets a little sweaty. And you're going to be like, dude, your hands are sweaty. Yeah. I actually said that to him like no. last week. I was like, you're, cause impossible, his, impossible. He, I don't like that feeling yeah. at all. Okay. You want me? I don't have clammy hands. A, impossible. Yeah. You're going to do everything you can yeah. to look as good as you can for Mikey. And then you're going to hold it against him that he finds you attractive. It's impossible. Why, why is clammy impossible. hands associated with? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mikey. Oh. That's why? what happens. You get sweaty hands no, when you're around some somebody you like. Are chronic sweaters. No, that's true. Yeah. And just yeah. have. Clammy. See, I have very dry hands. Yeah. My hands don't sweat. Yeah, like I'm feel mine right sitting next to you right now. Dry as a bone. Yep. Dry as a bone. Yeah, mine are too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Especially yep. since you're criticizing Mikey. Dry as a bone. Oh, <laughs> but, hey, she, her hands are softer than yours, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First time ever. We finally found someone. <laughs> our uh, our show live right now from Walk Ons 280, the Greystone location. <laughs> Three locations in the Birmingham area, Stadium Trace, Trustville, and right here in the Greystone area where all the games, Auburn uh, tipping in about an hour. We're going to walk up to that tip, and then Bama a little bit later on tonight, the entire tournament on at walk off. Yeah, I, we might exaggerate some things, but I've always said this. Their food is incredible. Fantastic. And we both got the tuna bowl. So good. It's so good. I mean, there's just so many different – there's such a variety. Obviously, it's got the – Cajun flair because yep. Brandon Landry, the guy that put this concept together, a former walk-on at LSU, he wanted to have that Cajun flair as part of the menu, and, and they've mastered that. It's just the ultimate sports bar food. And, again, there's not a bad seat in the house. They've got a ton of beers on tap. I'm drinking a cold Bud Light right now. I honestly – I have not been to the Trustful location. I don't need to because I'm a mile and a half yeah. from this location. But uh, I heard it's awesome, and I heard right now it's it's got more people going to that location – than this location yeah it's a it's on fire that community loves um supporting it's that community trustful people love supporting trustful and they've embraced the new location uh i've been to them all uh like them all and uh they all have their own personalities and it's a great place to be i'll always be thankful to this place uh during the pandemic they were one of the first places that uh opened back up or stayed open through and when we were doing radio i was uh we'd finish at 10 o'clock uh and i would come sit in the parking lot talk to some people about the venture we were about to go on. Uh, and I'd sit right over there where Brown moved his car to. <laughs> and I would sit there and have 40 minute phone calls and wait for this place to open at 11 o'clock and walk right in and have a great lunch. It's a wonderful place. Yeah. Walk on. It's all the place. Yeah, we get off, uh, off the air at 10 o'clock and we do off a lot, a lot of 10 45 AM, 11 o'clock lunches. And there was a lot of cold beer involved too. <laughs> <laughs> and especially when we were planning out Something's this venture. Change. And oh. it's hard to believe that it was almost three years ago because, you know, Matt Roth, the owner here, was asking. 
He's like, you, you guys been doing the video element forever? And I was like, since we started this. And he was like, how long ago was that? It's three years. He was like, my crazy. God, uh, it is crazy. It does fly. But remember, they were with us last few days of radio, if I remember. Oh, right. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, First yeah, yeah. time we met Matt. Yeah. Matt, with yeah, radio yeah. only. Yak's got his fourth foul there, boys. No, that's not on Yak's. No, they're no, not was right there. The one before that. The okay. sixth foul was on him. Uh, UAB is down eight. But if uh, they're without Yak's, it may as well be 80. I don't know how they win this game without Yak's because. I think I looked up and it was his fourth foul when he was walking yeah. in. Uh, to the bench. Well, he's on the bench right yeah. now, and he's very, very frustrated. The problem is the inside guy for San Diego State, Lede, has got uh, 20 points. Yeah. So San Diego State, Brian Dutcher, decided he would test out Yaks to see what the American Conference Defensive Player of the Year looked like, and yeah. uh, he's had his hands full. Yeah, today. well, they, they've tested Davis as well. Davis says four, and Yaks says yeah, four. and they've each fouls been, on them. They've each been covering the same guy. Yeah, and that guy's got 20 points, by the way. And the officials are not letting him play. Yeah, uh, 44-36, UAB is uh, down right now. What's up now? How are you doing? All right, we hey. got to we – How you doing? We're going to get some fresh You're doing good, here. hey, man. Yeah. Good how to see you? you. Good to see you. Anybody else need anything? You all good? Yeah, I'm good right. right now. Welcome yep. to walk-ons. Thank you. Yep. Welcome Thank to walk-ons. <laughs> Thank you for walk-ons taking good care of us. Uh, I'm going to back up. Hey, the, by uh, the way, I am pulling for us to lose our merch deal. Well, that's what everybody's talking about right now. Tide Hoop News says my free hat just arrived. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I think Marquette about, will find a way to yeah, win this we'll game. We'll it to the under-16 timeout, <laughs> and they've <laughs> got it to five, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Is, Marquette wins this game by 15. Yeah. You, what but, would you but, What would you put the live line on this game right now? Final, uh, final score. I, I'll tell you what. I would put it at. And yeah. I think it's going to be around that. I think I would put Marquette at minus eight and a half. Yeah. I'll go ahead and say it though. I'll go ahead I'm and say check it. it say it, Jim. I hope. I hope because we financially can handle it. I hope we lose it too. For just for our. No, I'd love it for the just audience. for our listeners so and fun. viewers. Yeah, I'd love it for the audience. That'd just for our fantastic. listeners and viewers. Put it in order. Uh, yeah. I think I think you should have put it in order. Yeah. I didn't put order. I think we need to try to do something for that. I don't know how we would do it, but I think we need to do it again for the Sweet Sixteen yeah, and Elite we, Eight. Me and we were talking five, about five and a half. By yeah. the way, five and a half is the live line. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Marquette's cut it to two. Yeah. Considering yeah. doing something with the Alabama team. Oh, look at well, listen. I hope they're left. Yeah, that's that's. We, we've got Auburn coming up uh, in less than an hour now. Right now, uh, I was going to pull up mybookie.ag just real quick and see where that line is. For Auburn, it had moved a little bit earlier today. Uh, Dunaway, I'll start down there with you because you got them for the national championship. Oh, I have them too. EG, you'll be you got next. eight brackets. you got eight brackets. You've got eight okay, different teams. I don't understand the disdain for multiple brackets. Yeah, because you, you, I'm fine with it. You've just got to declare the one that if you win it, you're like, I won my bracket. You can't you can't put yeah. eight in and be like, I won yeah, my we bracket. We talked about the bracket polygamist. And yeah. you, I mean, I, but, I don't, that like, number's massive. Like, I don't even think Brigham Young in his heyday <laughs> had seven wives. <laughs> his <laughs> heyday, but he was yeah. on his game. Can I give yeah. you all the names of them? Uh, give me, okay, okay, yeah, let's do that first. DG's going to give us her bracket right. names. Sort of serious. Okay. And that was How Illinois. did you do that? That was like, I'm kind of considering things, kind of just picking. Okay. Uh, Random was, has A&M winning. All right. Lucky number seven has Tennessee winning. So, just I just pick that, pick that, pick that. Yeah, what is lucky number 17? No, lucky number seven. What's it lucky was number my seven? seventh bracket. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right. Uh, what mascot would win? That so, you just Purdue did mascots winning. fight. This mascot yes. wins. Yeah. Purdue, got, wait a minute. How did Purdue win? Um, I mean, a Lobo, and I'm not a big fan yeah. of this Mexico team. A Lobo that, would tear the ass out of a uh, yeah, Boilermaker. Let, let, well, let, 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 let me look at this bracket. Oh, okay. hang on. Purdue is, oh, well, if they play Grambling State in the first round. That guy's, they're the Tigers, aren't they? Yeah, and you shoot a tiger. Well, he doesn't have, have a gun. gun. He's got a sledgehammer. He's a boilermaker. Oh, maker. I have to, I just assumed he was a human. And then in the, yeah. she, she's she's full second amendment round. A human, yeah. all humans have guns. Now in the oh. second round, they would get Utah State TCU winner. Uh, she's a, from the South. That's a frog and an Aggie. Yeah, I, I chose on, the Aggies. Come on, Blazer. Yeah. Uh, closed my eyes was my next bracket. So you, that's basically a dart on the wall. Yes. Uh, favorite color. Oh, so the two teams play which color Ooh. you like better? Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Did you okay. go Creighton? I have UNC winning the whole thing. Oh, so you go color. Carolina Blue. And then pick teams I haven't, and I have UConn winning. Okay. Yeah. Hey, by the way, do you think uh, the Blue Jay is a good mascot? Because I only uh, know of two Blue Jay mascots. Toronto and Creighton? Yeah, Toronto and Creighton. I think it's actually the little think, fact that you guys don't know okay. about me. Yeah. Uh, when I was – you're early an ornithologist? On, no, like seven, eight, nine. I had an Audubon bird book, and I could tell you any bird. Oh, that's really cool. That I like cool. that. That, I is, that, that, is, that is against type for you. We, yeah, we would have really thought you is. were shooting birds out but, of the tree. You know, that's one of those things, like, if I ever get to relocate one day, and I really want to live in Montana in the summers. I don't want to live uh, down on the coast in the winters. 
Um, I think I would pick up bird, bird watching, watching again. Interesting. Yeah. I like that. Bird fears. Uh huh. Bird okay. so it's your your it's funny you break bring this i'll never forget this so i was in forest brook neighborhood i grew up in sun never sh- shine there but um i was a massive again bird, bird fan watcher. the one bird or one of the few birds that i had never seen in in the wild was a hummingbird because they didn't have hummingbird feeders back oh, then that's how old i am and we had honeysuckle bushes all over the neighborhood and i had heard of some hummingbird sightings and i'll never forget the first time i saw i saw a hummingbird live i was in awe i know this is right really there. ridiculous so cool. no but it was like, like the, the helicopter coolest. of birds it was one of the coolest things <laughs> i've ever seen they're so birds. pretty pretty color because yeah. we were at but um, they could hover yeah th- there's a bar downtown and we went to meet our friend Brittany from um adams and budweiser was doing a promotion at innisfree on saturday and i walked in and I had a beer and i had to get out it was too crowded for me yeah. so i walked over to this bar kind of next door and they had these world book encyclopedias and they were the exact ones i had growing up and they were from like they were they were gifted to me down from another generation, but they were from like the fifties or sixties. But that's how I learned what dogs were, uh, birds, so everything. My, that was my Google back in the yeah. day. That's Those right. Books. That's right. I, we had the same thing, the same books, and uh, you know, slow days. I would just pull out the you know, I loved the, it. The S's. And I just, can still see the pictures yeah, and sit there and flip through the S's <laughs> and the T's. Yeah. When I uh, was a kid, yeah. a, a feral that's hound was one of the dogs yep. on one of the pages. Yep. The great white, I can still see um, the first great white picture I saw. My nanny never was able to get out of to get A, B, C, or D out of layaway, but but <laughs> S, T, S, and X's, X, X and B were all X, U, and B were all together. You know what? My mom still got them, yeah. and um, I might go by the house and get one just to have at the office, put it right. on the coffee table. Oh, I like that. Yeah, just because it it really is. I know this sounds stupid. But we used to have a thing called a phone book. Yep. Yep. And. Um, phone book i used it a lot i don't know if you guys did I oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. right oh, um but we had the phone book we had encyclopedias it was just time life used to do an infomercial and it was how to fix things and now you can youtube anything i still could youtube something i wouldn't be able to figure it out but time life had books on how to build a deck do you guys remember that there was a series yep you know how to oh yeah, yeah 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 you yeah. would go online and you'd, wow. you'd order time life books and four to six weeks later they get delivered it'd, it'd be mail. like plumbing carpentry stuff like <laughs> yeah, that it's yeah. crazy <laughs> Different world. Yeah. Yep. Different now world. you just pull up YouTube and, and right. somebody yeah. walks you through everything. You fix to anything. Build a bomb. Yep. Yeah. Hey, so it is day two of the NCAA tournament. We're live at Walk Ons, Highway 283, Great Walk Ons location, Stadium Trace in Hoover. Cut it down to six, Brownie. Trustville and Highway 280 in the Greystone mm-hmm. area. And uh, we're wa- free throw. And we are watching UAB right now, 49 43. San Diego State leads UAB. Will Schaefer from Oak Mountains at the free throw line, Brownie. Look how much. Was he was he that big when he played at Oak Mountain? Yeah, yeah, he was. Oh, yeah. Just, Leighton graduated with him, and she was yeah. like, "He is a massive." Yeah, he's a big kid, big kid. How tall is he? Uh, he's six ten. He's yeah, he's six a legit ten. six ten. Six ten, yeah, yeah. Wow. Did they I, win I, the state championship with him? He there? did. I yeah. just thought he was skinnier. Yeah, well, he might have added some bulk. I know yeah. he was six ten. I thought though, he was a, they, a, more yeah. of a rail. Yeah, I had a friend. Um, friend of Harper's that dated him yeah. for a long time. Yeah, big old kid. There's no doubt about it. So it's cut to five right now. So UAB has erased yeah. some of what they've given back. So we'll see how that goes. Marquette has pulled ahead of Western Kentucky. So all you begging for that free merch, <laughs> you're in trouble now. Marquette's taking the lead. They will not look back on Western Kentucky. America's team is in action now. They are trailing Clemson 19 to 11. This is a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Dunaway, you and I are both on New Mexico and Lance is on Clemson. Ooh. Is that right? Yeah, I'm on Clemson. Clemson is one of my bigger plays today. I really, really like Clemson to the spot because not only because I'm a contrarian, as you guys know, I thought Clemson is just a better team than New Mexico. And P.J. Hall, the 6'10", uh, 4 slash 5 for, for Clemson, I just didn't see New Mexico being able to match up with him. Uh, 9-2 current run right now. They're up 20-11, to 11, still a lot of basketball to play. Uh, but I did like Clemson a lot in this spot today. How, how deep do you have to go, Brandon, before you continue on the scores here, uh, before you put Yaks back in the game if you're if you're Andy? Well, I mean, they've kept it. Uh, they're shooting free throws uh, every time I look up. Yeah, they've they're got making it a cut, run. They've got to cut to four. Uh, I pray I can get in the under eight timeout. That's what I'm still saying. Out of the game. I, was yeah. thinking, I was thinking, God, if you can keep it close to six or five, yeah. then if you're still in fighting distance, you can hold him that at, long. At the under eight timeout, if I'm AK, I got Yak sitting right next to me. Right and the go. minute I need him, I send him to the scorer's table. Problem is, every time he checks in, it is almost an instant foul. Yep. Because he's battling the day so much inside yep. of it. You, is that him right there? Maybe he's cut a three. Oh, what we got? Matt Roth, the owner. Got. I, I wish I had a quarter for every time I've been around Lance and some somebody's handed him a napkin with writing on it. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll come check it out in a minute. <laughs> wow. didn't, didn't know I hit so close to home. <laughs> 49, 46, miss it. Rebound. Come on, guys. Oh, uh, uh, we got it back, Brandon. There we go. Chance nice. to tie. Yep. There Chance to tie. There we go. All right. We're not going to do live play by play no, here not as, at all. We, as we do live play by play with 10 51 to go. Oh, uh, but Clemson and New game. Mexico's 25 21 yeah. right now. I've got New Mexico State, or no, not New Mexico State. You'd be in their uh, smoky grays. Uh, 49 46. Blazers could tie it with a three. And that's significant oh, that's the way foul. this half started. They were down as much as 10. And get in. Boom! Tie ball game. Wow. Forty nine. Oh, look at this butter. Hey, this is butter. Well, you know they, they weathered that storm. So they now, did. now everything shifts back to San Diego That's State. Right. The pressure is entirely on them right now. Yeah, and AK mm -hmm. has gone to some half court pressure here to kind of switch things up a little bit. Yeah. I'll say this, man. I I really didn't know what to think of Andy Kennedy as a coach early on. Hell of a coach. Yeah, and I look back in retrospect to what he did at Ole Miss, and people can take shots all they want. That is a tough, tough job. Yeah. Even Chris Beard in year one couldn't mm -hmm. navigate them down the stretch get to an NCAA tournament. But, I mean, Andy can coach. And you see in-game coaching from Andy, which, you know, there's some guys that are just really good recruiters uh, and they can't in-game coach. I, mean, I think we saw that from Steve Not Alford good. yesterday. <laughs> John um, Calipari. Yeah, but but Andy is a he's a really, really good coach. And I'm not saying that just because, you know, he's a well, look, show. I mean, we it's hard to be objective about Andy. We absolutely right. love oh. the guy. Oh, it's a stupid pass. Uh, but I, I want you know, I want him to be extremely successful. But I agree with you. I think when you look at everybody thought Kermit Davis was, they've got the lead. Here we go. Everybody thought Kermit Davis was this great coach, and he goes there and doesn't do anything more than what <laughs> Andy did. Yeah. And, and so far, really, Chris Beard in year one has not improved what Andy did. Maybe he will one day. Yeah. I think you think he will. I mean, you were a kid, but I, I remember watching um i think he was viewed as probably one of the top five all-time hated basketball players in sec history marshall henderson yeah this kid yeah. named marshall henderson okay. you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. he played for andy he played with such a swagger i mean he would get into it with opposing fan bases wow. thank you very and much. he was just he was an incredible player but they got to the tournament they won a game in the tournament and that's just something you don't get with old miss yeah. san diego state finally ended in a love and run yeah, but again, we've talked about now you're within a sight of the under eight media timeout done away. So you've done all this with the axe on the bench. You've we'll, got the game tied. You're not in an emergency situation right now. You might even could, you might could push it all the way to the under four timeout and just let him finish the game. As long as these guys are working, there's a big shot outside. Oh, oh no, boy, where's the foul? Got slaughtered. Beat him by the hand. The yeah, UAB able to get the board. Chase the rebound now. Skip pass. Get yeah, pass. It's, a, it's all nice butter nice right now. now. Oh. That's there a foul. I didn't call it. Got, got to call them on both sides. They called that. Yeah. I thought they just called it out of bounds. No, no, no. That's got to yeah. be a foul. 51-51, and now you're at 846. So we got, a, we got a bunch of Karens officiating this game. That had to be a foul. A bunch of Karens? Yeah. Boy, they didn't last night. No. I mean, freaking Hunter Dickinson gets away with that elbow uh, in the backcourt. Don't bring up the Sanford game. Well, no. people already were earlier. Oh, people he, are still. Yax is back in the game. He's only got two points. How about the fact? This is 51-51, almost to the under eight timeout, and Yax has got two points. Would you have believed that? No, no, no not at all. I, I mean, I don't know how UAB hangs in this game with Yax only scoring two points. I can't believe he's back in the game right now. Well, I mean, you're, you're just hoping to steal minutes here, right? And you get it to the under eight timeout, oh, and uh, he has to leave. Uh, Troy says Marshall Henderson wanted to be Eminem so bad. Did you see some Eminem uh, I mean, and Marshall Henderson? Yeah, who did? Didn't want to be Eminem twenty years ago, right? <laughs> well, me, yes. yeah. I didn't want the uh, the 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 peroxide hair. Yeah, Did but you want uh, to be Eminem? I, I wanted know. his his skill set and his money. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would have taken that. We don't have uh, we don't have volume because we're doing the show here. Preston says this is a UAB crowd. I'm assuming the Bama and Auburn fans are there pulling for the Southside boys. I have seen a. I've seen two colors. I've seen Auburn fans yep. and next round fans. Oh, good. And I'm not exaggerating. There's a lot of next round. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not go. talking about here. I'm oh. talking about at the arena. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, here everybody's on for UAB. UAB. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the arena, I don't know. We don't have the volume up. But I would imagine, I don't think Alabama fans, I think they like Andy Kennedy, and I think they would pull for the hometown team. Yeah. And this is San Diego State who knocked them out last year. Oh, yeah. 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 So I, I would imagine Alabama fans are on board. And Auburn and UAB's never had a beef. So hey, hey real quick, back to um, Eminem. Yeah. And our friend Charles Barkley had one of the greatest quotes of all time. It was like 20 years ago. And he's like, our world is completely messed up. He was like, the best golfer in the world is a brother. And the best <laughs> rapper <laughs> is a white guy. And, it, and, I mean, it was just one of those great lines that was so true at the time. 
and uh, so amazing. Yep. UAB is now extending their lead 54 51. This has been an incredible run. I'll tell you, when AK went to that little three quarter court pressure, that changed a lot of things in this game. Oh, boy. They just they cut that apart. Well, right Yaks there. can't. Yaks can't defend that, Lance. Yeah. He's got four fouls. So, I mean, if a guy gets in the paint, it's over. Yeah, I'm almost, uh, I know everything's running through Yaks right now. I almost bring him out until the under the, uh, that, that, Four minute media timeout, and then uh, just let him go from there. Yeah, because the other guys had such a great run, but there's Yax there with a the move. That's to the why I don't coach. Yeah. That's uh, why you don't take him out. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's big why. bucket right there. Uh, if UAB, again, we're under eight now, so they're getting close to that under eight timeout. 56 53 is the score. This reminds me of uh, the last time UAB won the conference USA tournament when they went to the, um, when did they went to the NCAA tournament? I can't remember who they were playing in the championship game. I don't know. It was North Texas, and AK went to this little three-quarter court press, and North Ooh. Texas is like, like they'd never seen a press in their life. So this is something I've seen AK do before, and I uh, have some pretty good success with it. But, boy, I'll tell you what now, 56-53, UAB with the ball, under seven to go right here. This this could not have set up any better for UAB based on the way they started this game. Yeah, I mean, this would be so exciting because, you know, without the massive upset, which Dunaway will get blamed for years if, if Auburn was to lose to Yale, if – if they can close this out, I mean, we have a team that will go to the second weekend. Yep, there's no and doubt. That's, that's pretty incredible. Yep. Uh, UAB can't get the bucket, so it is 56-53. Meanwhile, Clemson killing in New Mexico, 30-11. Yep. Dang, I did not uh, I got Clemson in Sweet 16. Yeah. Let's push. South Carolina's women's going to survive today, apparently. Oh, thank God. Yeah, it's on my TV. <laughs> UConn's out to an 8 nothing lead over Stetson. Marquette. 55-52 with Western Kentucky in the battle for merch. I, I, I don't know if you know this, Dunaway. They serve women's basketball fans here. That's right, Yes, Jim. they do. They serve everybody, LT. Yeah. This is uh, it's America's sports bar. Not everybody. Comes. You cannot be served here without shoes or a shirt. We had a, uh, we had a very long stretch of whistle-free basketball there that just ended. 56-55, uh, UAB leads it there in the under-eight media timeout. What do you do? You coming out of this timeout? You sit yaks? Oh, I thought you were going to take a commercial break with the no, broadcast. We, there's no we, way we can do that. We owe you a break too along no. the way. Uh, what, do you, what do you do? Do you sit yaks coming out of this timeout? I and do. See how long you can survive. Yep, it? I do. Yeah, because it, it really was yaks on the bench when you made your made your run. Yeah. Let's, let's not forget this. What is very much in play that we just saw happen with Northwestern and Florida Atlantic overtime? Yeah. Yep. So you might get an additional five minutes yeah and you don't you can't win probably can't win overtime without yeah yeah i just i'm just saying the the big run the comeback was with yaks on the bench so you're getting some good minutes from will schaefer and then butter johnson and everyone else uh, made some big shots well, there you so. almost want to put will schaefer in and say uh <laughs> if anybody gets to the paint clobber them make them shoot free throws let's yeah. don't yeah. give up anything you easy. use his fouls yeah i mean you got five to give if you give all of them we're, we're going to pat you on the back and thank you for your service. Does he have zero right now? I have not looked, Jim, but, I'm, I mean, he's just got five total fouls. my point. Let's get the five there. No. Um, so, there you go. That's uh, that's an update on what's going on. Clemson up 30 to 11. I started this question, and we ended up talking about sweaty hands. <laughs> All the way down at the uh, end of the table, we'll start with you. Auburn, a 13-and-a-half point favorite as we're nearing tip for Auburn. Scheduled about 45 minutes from now, but this UAB game's got to end first. Uh, how are you feeling about the Tigers, Dunaway? Uh, they're my national champions. I'm aware. So, so that has not changed. I uh, I, I like them today. Uh, this, you know, first game in a tournament is always uh, more scary than the second one to me if you're the better team. So to get your feet wet and get rolling. But I think this team is so deep and so many like parts that they will uh, cruise early in this tournament. Yeah. I yeah. think their bench is going to be utilized and we're going to see that. And they're my national champs too, Dunaway. In, uh, one, in, of my in one of your brackets. Uh, yeah. LT 13 and a half Auburn favorite right now over Yale. Yeah. Look, they're going to win this game, I believe. And I do think for a deep run, you're going to have to have some guards that step up, whether that's Chad Baker Mazar that we pointed out last, uh, yesterday or Denver Jones. Aiden Holloway making some big shots. They're going to need that moving forward, but they've won six straight uh, by an average of 18.8 points per game. Again, Danny Wolf, seven-footer for Yale. All five Bulldogs average double, double figures. Best defense right now in the Ivy League, and they played some really tough competition and out of conference. So I think Yale will come to play. Um, I think, you know, it's an interesting game for a little bit, probably at, the, at half. I would say Auburn's up six to ten, and, People are sweating a little bit, but I think Auburn pulls away in the second half. Stay with Lance here. Colorado and Florida. The Gators a one-point dog as we near tip of that one. It is a, a 3.30 tip, so just after Auburn and Yale. You get Florida and Colorado, a Florida slight dog in this game. Yeah, right? look, Colorado is – they've got singular talent. They've got three guys that are going to play at the next level. 
I just don't know what's going on with the Buffalo love. They should have lost the other night. I had Boise. Um, it is my, it's one of my few NCAA losses to date right now. Um, but, you know, they, they just outplayed them in the final four minutes and Boise State forgot how to play basketball. With all that said, I think Florida still missing one of their bigs is a better team. And uh, I think you're getting value with the Florida Gators here. I've got Florida going deep. So I hope. So you hope. I'm hoping. You hope. I think I have them in the Sweet 16 for sure. Well, my problem is I've got NC State going real deep. No, that you're That's good. a good thing, right? I mean, now. They're playing Oakland yeah. right now. I guess so, yeah. so, do you guys know who the best or one of the best players on New Mexico's team is? Uh, uh, I do not. That's going to be um, Frank House, John Legend. Frank yeah. House, Legend. the golf so, course. Jalen House, the kid <laughs> shooting right now. His dad played in the NBA, but there is another former NBA player's son who's got a patino tie, Jamal Mashburn Jr. Oh, yeah, I did yeah, see yeah, that, yeah. 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 yeah, and he's pretty good. I think Boy. he averaged about 14 a game. I loved Mash. When he played, he was great. Yeah, that guy could play. When did he play? Was that, did I cover him? No, was, it was Patino. He, was he there, uh, was he there in 90s? 96, 97. Yeah, okay, yeah. So he's, yeah, it was after you were there. Yeah. He, there was he, was, a, he was not only unforgettable. So. I was there with uh, Derek Feldhouse, I think was his name, and then uh, – John Pelfrey. Ron, yeah, Pelfrey and – Richie Farmer. Yeah, yeah. And there that was, was a heck of a team. There was one other kid. Yeah. Hey, Richie Farmer, I guarantee his dream car growing up was either a Camaro or a Camaro. Corvette. I was going to yeah. say Camaro, the, yeah. uh, the Smokey of the Bandit car. I'm, I'm glad he handed down his mustache to Grant Nelson. Uh, since we've been talking about this so much, I will say Yaks could not come out in that media timeout because he was at the stripe coming out of the media timeout. So he is in the game playing with four fouls right now. So this is a tricky situation with 5.15 to go. Uh, and you would Throw it away. You get a timeout and yeah. take anybody you want out. Yeah, right you now. can. 58-57. UAB just turned it over, but they've got a one-point lead as uh, they turn it over. Yeah. But uh, see, there's a feed into the paint. You just can't. Only, oh, there's you, nothing. You can only defend it so much. Well, Adi has, uh, I think he's got 26 after that made bucket there done away. And if I saw this right earlier, 16 of the 26 have come in the paint. UAB up 58-57, 5.02 to play in the contest. If you're watching that on CBS, you can do that. And we're at walk-ons. <laughs> You just, have, you just have to add some things to where it's not play by play. I'm like you just can't say here they just fed the post again to Ladi and he yeah, just scored yeah. again. Yeah, UAB you is down do one. Okay. You can't say things yeah. like let's pause ten seconds for station identification on this. The if you guys UAB relates to radio network had to coach a football game or a basketball game, head coach, what would you feel more comfortable with? Baseball. Basketball, baseball. I mean, I wouldn't feel comfortable. No, football or basketball. Like you're the oh, assumption you make is I know what I'm doing in both of them. Yeah, I, I would feel better on basketball just saying we're going to go man. Uh, we are play either your, going to press off. or not. Yeah. yeah. Man and, in uh, motion. I'd 100% coach Bucky ball. If I was doing I'd press off every made basket and shoot a bunch of threes. I could let them play street ball. It, yeah. if, if we were to play, uh, if we were to coach football, it'd be a lot more difficult. Yeah. I mean, what, is that not the way you would? I'd press every made basket, shoot a ton of threes. I could, I could be defensive coordinator and say we're in the nickel and uh, – and, uh, get after that quarterback. We're in a nickel. Yeah, go get him. No, 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 no blitz. No blitz. See ball, get ball. Nickel, yeah. nickel. Ah, uh, uh, boy, that's a big shot right yeah, there. Sixty-one fifty-eight. Blazers down now. Yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, it's starting to slip away a little bit. This is a crucial, crucial time, and AK sees it, and he's going to call a timeout even I mean, before they get to the media timeout at four oh three. The new rules this year, they have the opportunity to stretch this into a media timeout. But uh, my point is, he wasn't going to risk waiting. Yeah. He had to burn that timeout. Yeah. Um, while these we've got three SEC games that are going to be going on at the same time, Auburn, Yale, Auburn, a 13 and a half point favorite at mybookie.ag, Colorado, Florida, uh, Florida, one point dog at mybookie.ag. And then the flip side, another eight, nine game, Texas A&M, Nebraska, A&M, a one point favorite. It has been an awful start to the tournament for the Southeastern Conference. You can't paint it any other way. And they're going to have three teams going at the same time. We talked about those other two. How do you feel about Texas A&M and Nebraska? I like Nebraska a little bit. It is a true coin flip game. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, again, yeah, I've seen a one point favorite. I've seen it minus one on each side it, over the last two days. It sort of flipped around back and forth. And I think Adams a more talented team. I think the better coach is Fred Hoiberg. But it's but, not. I mean, it's not a huge gap though, is it? No, 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 no. I no, mean, no. you like Buzz? Yeah, I, I could. I mean, I don't feel good about this this game at all. Yeah, you'd re you'd rather sit this one out. Yeah, and it's one of those because it's an eight nine. I've got Houston moving forward anyway. So yeah, I've got Houston. I my let me see what my final four is. <laughs> On which, which bracket? Which bracket? Well, That's I, I can't I, remember. I only talk about the work one. Okay. Okay. Dunaway, Texas A and M, uh, Nebraska. I have Nebraska winning. Um, 
Texas A&M do what they had to do to get into the tournament. I just think they um, you put out a lot of energy and, and mojo just to get there. You and, know, that uh, didn't affect NC State, it and did I thought not. it would. It did not. I mean, they had – to do a lot more, uh, they had to do a lot more. Duquesne, too. Yeah, Duquesne. I mean, I mean, it seems like at least early it is affecting New Mexico. You yeah, know, New Mexico not had well. to win out in the Mountain West or at least win until Saturday. They won out, and it uh, looks like they're just uh, a little off right now. Yeah. Uh, Vermont and Duke starts the night slate. Actually, AM and uh, Nebraska start the night slate. Vermont and Duke, the second one out. Duke, 12 and a half point favorites. You don't see any trouble for the Blue Devils here, do you? I don't. And uh, so we saw Mercer beat them in the first round. And yep. Somebody else beat them in the first round. Can you guys help me out? I cannot remember, but I do remember it happening. I'll tell you who. Uh, C.J. McCollum was on that team. Oh, I'll think about it in a second. Anyway, we've seen them go out twice early. Maybe it was Iona. Um, anyway, uh, we've seen them go out early. And I, this Duke team, to me, doesn't seem to have any toughness. Uh, Dunaway, Duke, okay, you think? I think they survived today, yes. Yeah. I don't know how far they go. I know Reese Davis on our show earlier this week had him in the final four. That's part of the contract. We work at ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alabama and Charleston. The Crimson Tide still a nine-point favorite. Again, Berman pointed this out earlier today. The total at 172.5 is the biggest total you'll have in the first round. Alabama and Charleston Dunaway, the Crimson Tide, nine-point favorites right now at mybookie.ag. This seems like a sexy, if not upset pick, Charleston covering the number type pick. Talking to me? Yeah, Dunaway. Uh, I would agree with that. Uh, Charleston will, will likely keep this close, but uh, that's what everybody tells me. But if Alabama's making their shots, they definitely have the the ability to, to score 100 and hold them to 80, 82. So, you know, but I think Alabama could cover, but it would take a great shooting night. So I am going to put the over under at 64 and a half threes that are attempted by both combined teams. Well, that's a lot of threes. Lance. Well, I mean, Charleston right now, third nationally yep. at 31 threes attempted per game. Alabama is fourth at 30. What's the number you have? 64 and a half threes. Wow. So the combined right now is 61 per game. Yeah. Well, I think there'll be more. Well, this and, game. and here's wow. the problem is neither defense is particularly good. So neither no. defense gets a whole lot of stops. So I do I, think you're going to get some shots. I off. do think this can be a fun game to watch. I could see Alabama pull away and win this game by 15, 20 points, but also could see it coming down to the wire. I just think the style of play, if you like offense, you're going to like this game. Come yeah. on. Yeah. 635 is the start of that game. UAB, Yax is still in the game. He's got eight points and he's played a lot of this game in foul trouble. He's currently playing with four fouls with 348 to go. He hits a free throw to make it a one point game. San Diego State leads by one right now. He's only got nine points for the game. Yeah. I mean, it has not been his best game, but the fact that they're in this game scoring nine points is pretty remarkable. You're talking about the conference player of the year and a first team all conference player in the American, UAB's best player. And they've done this without a lot of his offense. Uh, oh, okay. oh well, grab it with your hand. Grab it with your hand. That's one of the things San Diego State is so good on the offensive boards. Yeah. And just, you know, the opposite of what Dunaway thinks about South Carolina is San Diego State. They, they are not lazy. Awesome. Yeah, they do. And they're just big. Lance, I remember Dunaway was uh, sitting next to me last year in the media seating uh, in Louisville. Just seeing them on the floor, they are so thick. Yeah. It's just a thick basketball team. It looked like a football team. Yeah. Honestly. It, uh, you know, and this is, you know, we're cool. Why Leonard played and you know, he was on a team that got to an elite eight and back Steve Fisher, and I guess Brian Dutcher, this is where he learned it. But you know, the focus is always great defense. Yep. And uh, that's what they play. And UAB has hung with them. You got to give UAB credit. This game has not gone the way AK would have diagrammed it, but they are still in this game at the three minute mark, only down one to San Diego state. So 42 of 73 uh, ESPN personalities had UConn winning it all. And they were up 20. Uh, less than 11 minutes into this game on Stetson. Against <laughs> Stetson. What, uh, what was the number on that game? Do you remember uh, off the top of your head? 24, 25, something like yeah, that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, and they're already up 20. UAB oh. tried a three, couldn't get it to go. Oh, oh that's oh, a foul. Oh. foul. That's they a did. Foul. Is it on the axe? No. Uh, I think it is. I don't think it is. Was it not on three? I didn't think it was. We will see here. It was definitely a foul, though, San Diego State. Yep, yep sure was. Yeah, if, they, if they did blow the whistle, that's Tim. Ah, I don't know how they win it without him. UAB's just down one, I know, 239 to go. But, boy, I, I, Andy showed you just how important he knows Yax is to this team. I mean, he got a lot more out of him than I thought he could, playing him with four fouls as long as he did. 
That's going to do it for Yaks. Ah, it's a tough one to swallow. So what are you guys thinking if this thing doesn't go oh, overtime? have been on Yaks because he's still uh, in He is in there yeah. rebounding, but it, if it's a two-shot foul, yeah. no, that's a one and one Yeah. But well, he'd be fouled out, so he – yeah. Yeah, but I've still seen him on the block like that. Yeah, and they sub the out for him. Yeah. So well, I'm if, just saying it would have been five fouls. He'd have been out. They couldn't have shot it on the block. No, I – well, if it's uh, two shots, not if, but he, Yaks would have fouled out. They couldn't. Okay. They wouldn't have well, continued. Obviously, all yeah, 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 obviously so. he did not though, because yeah. he's in the game and right. a one and one. Yeah. So uh, that's good news, and does what he does best: gets a rebound. Sixty-two, sixty. San Diego State has the lead. Mm-hmm. So if this game doesn't go to overtime, we're projecting Auburn starts in about thirty minutes. Uh, probably so. Probably so. How you doing? Oh, yeah. Good yeah. to see you. Good to we're, see you. We're, we're live on the air right yeah. now, just in case. All right. If you don't want to be on camera. Yeah, you're live on air, yep. Yeah. You're fine, but if you're skipping work, you're going to get caught. Yeah. Okay. All right. 62-62 right now. Um, uh, YouTube. Just download YouTube yeah. on our uh, – open something on YouTube. Right now, yeah. Huh? Huh? Yep, YouTube. Yep. Next round live on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Love for you to like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, 62-62 as you watch live right now here on our platforms with us as we're at Walk-Ons, continuing our broadcast today. Uh, Walk-Ons uh, just off of Highway 281-19, the Greystone locations. We're Greystone also location. Trustville and over at Stadium Trace there as we continue on live today. Um, you know, we had a loose ball right there, so yeah. this is coming down to the wire, and it looks like uh, – so they, apparently they called a foul. Yeah. So uh, good reminder, great cocktails uh, are being served here. Uh, great ice cold <laughs> beer and other uh, cocktails. <laughs> All lots, you want. Lots of cocktails. lots of lots of them. So it's a good, uh, good time to uh, out. come out and enjoy the madness. Have a guy. Hey, enjoy that the is, tournament. That is March Madness. Uh, Lamont Butler is shooting the free throws right now. Just a friendly S- member of our audience. Want to come up and talk to us. 462 San Diego State right now. New Mexico is trying to inch back into this game. First half over there still, 34-19. Well, this is going to be back-to-back years. I've watched San Diego State eliminate a state team. They're really growing on my uh, upper right-hand drawer, risk, drawer list here. You're, you're never going to be a San Diego State fan? Not, not liking, on that, list. Not liking that program right now at all. Come on, UAB. Pull this out. Uh, getting good reviews that the Alabama and Auburn fans are cheering for UAB. Now, the question okay. will be, will Alabama f- cheer for Auburn and Auburn Ooh. cheer for Alabama? I don't I think don't so. Think yeah, that's so. a bridge too far. Yeah, I think that yeah. I think they can meet in the middle on UAB. But, but Jimmy, not. Alabama's going to be pulling for the Auburn Tigers. Oh, I am. How yeah. you doing? Yeah. Well, hey, yeah. Hey. Welcome in. Welcome hey. in. How you guys doing? Hi. Yep. Yep. Good to well, see you. How are you? Nice seeing you. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Watch that. Yep. We're live on the air. Right yeah, now, we're Laura. live on the air right now. Yeah, so just... be careful. Don't uh, <laughs> okay, here for the Auburn game. Yeah. How do you feel about yeah. Auburn? Yeah. Good? Good? Yeah. Auburn's huh? Final four. Hey, Dunaway's got him win the national championship. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got him too. Yeah. Oh, she I'm does sorry. too. She does too. Yeah. yeah. She, yeah. she also has UConn winning the national oh, championship. My gosh. <laughs> so you feel good about him today, Auburn today, right? Huh? 13 and a half. You think they'll cover 13 and a half? Uh, okay. 13 and a half. Right. Play him down. <laughs> Absolutely. Good Absolutely. To see you, Good to see you. Enjoy the game. Yeah. Good to have so many people out here today. You're right. Yeah. And all the next round oh, people. You, you yeah. peek over the uh, the ledge there. You'll see there's a lot of people in there. Yeah. Uh, Mark. 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 He wanted to say hello to you there, EG. I know. He used yeah. to work for our friends at TJC Mortgage way back. Oh, did he? Oh, really? Yeah. How about yeah. that? All right, so it's 64-62, San Diego State leads UAB. Lance, you asked the question earlier. Uh, no, Auburn is not going to start on time here. Somewhat depending on how this game goes. Obviously, if there's overtime, that is super bad news for an Auburn start time. So that is going to be a little bit delayed. We're going to hang with you for just a little bit here and see how this turns out. And uh, do a little post-reaction. Do on some UAB. reaction to UAB. Excuse me, to UAB and continue talking about the, the Auburn game. That's a out. foul. Oh, Where's the, they okay. called it. About to have to break that seal, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Are you now? No, come on. Yeah. Got to hold on. Penny yeah. beer night. Deke says, I love seeing folks walk through and their ass goes in front, <laughs> front yeah. center. I just yeah. have it. Man, come on. We're just laid back having I fun. Just, my know. only thing, and that's great. Yeah, I, I just, just don't want them to say anything on the air that they regret. Yeah. Well, that's, that's all a, I'm doing. But, it's like, I just, you've got to. Uh, I, I, I didn't want somebody to walk in here and say, uh, 
Yeah, you hey, know, you know, first. You know, it, no, I was afraid it was going to be. You know, if you know, if I wasn't married, I'd be no, calling no. you up right now, Dunaway. Dunaway. <laughs> Dunaway. Oh, don't get your feelings hurt. Gonna, <laughs> you just assumed it was going to be you. <laughs> oh, you're so vain. <laughs> Uh, Cliff, yeah, Don, you see, I threw a little Don twist got, at the end. I threw a little twist at the end. Tell her about the sailor that hit on you at four, man. Yeah. Uh, she's heard of the story. No, let's hear it again. Uh, no, we don't want to tell her. Oh, okay. All right. He, under, he, he may be short on short this, this weekend. Under, <laughs> under a minute and a half, 64-63, San Diego State leads UAB. He may have internet this weekend. Uh, <laughs> big defensive stand here for the Blazers playing some zone to try to protect the Yaks. Uh, 64 63. Yep, just gave that score. I know. Yep. Yeah, trying to make it look like it's not play by play. Yeah. Just trying to comment. <laughs> Shot clock. Oh. Way low. Oh. oh, that's over the back. That was over the back. They, they did not call it, but UAB got a loose ball. Oh, they the Karens decide to swallow their whistles there over the, over yeah, the back. That was definitely over the back. <clears throat> With a minute to go, UAB did not get the call. And unfortunately for the Blazers, San Diego State shooting uh, free throws the rest, shoot well, two the rest uh, of the push game. off and, and over, over the, the back. back. You got them Are you effing kidding me? Yeah, that was a straight forearm, left forearm to the spine. Oh, Up what a high. horrible call! Oh, yeah. You can actually see, yeah, that and then push. over the back. It was yeah. two, yeah, two fouls within you know less than a second there. Yeah, yeah, and I think that fouls Davis out. So yeah. there's another inside guy that has been playing with foul trouble. He's gone. Yax has somehow managed to stay in this game, but JV and Davis has fouled out. And Marquette trying to cover that 15 and a half number, by the way. I up. told you. 78, 65, 420 to go in the game in that one. Western Kentucky had the lead at halftime. I'm sorry, everyone. I was merch cheering madness. for the merch madness that's payout. When, that's when everybody was counting their free stuff. And now uh, it's 78, 65, as Lance said. UConn is only up 30 to 8 on Stetson. Only. Oh <sighs> you, th you think Stetson doesn't belong in this tournament? You you got them 30 to 8 on them? Uh. Jadon Ladee has got some Jason Caffey. In I thought the yeah. same thing. He looks just like Jason Caffey, doesn't he? Jason Caffey, a really good player. Great he really hands. was. Had Great a good athlete, pro career. Green hands, yeah. One of the best. Like pro, one guy. of the best pro careers of an Alabama player, it's really. Miss, when he consistently, yeah. yeah. Miss, miss, a good miss, 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 miss career with the Bulls. That was uh, so, so flat. flat. Yep. Uh, I can't right. get over the no foul call. That was so oh, yeah. stupid. You got to call it both ways. What you don't want is a force three down three with 58 seconds. No, you can still take two here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Take, yeah. You don't, you only don't. if you get a great open look. Yeah. I am definitely looking two here. Yeah. That is not. Uh, a good I don't shot. like that shot. Oh, but oh, I like that. He, I like he acts with a little push off. Oh, keep fighting. Keep fighting. No. Oh, he got pushed. That's got to be on white. Yeah. On they the called it on the go. floor. Okay. Yeah. So Yak's going to shoot Ooh. some free throws here. Yeah, double bonus. Double bonus. Yeah, UAB keeps, down three. Get keeps both them alive. Keeps them alive. Yep. alive. I don't know how many fouls the D's got. He's laughing at that one, but my God, he just got away with a push and an over the back. Yeah. Right. Biggest call of the game earlier. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They do. I mean, that's such a physical team. You could probably yeah. call a foul on every rebound. I mean, they, they had to call on 25 three times. I know. He's just <laughs> clobbering Yaks. I mean, they. He could probably oh, now no, they if they called it on Ladie. It wasn't on him. It was on twenty five yeah. three times. Yeah. Now Ladie was laughing. I don't know yeah. that he got the foul called on him. I think he did. Yax is basically an eighty percent free throw shooter. Nice. Oh, perhaps, uh, if he perhaps. makes what? No, don't bring that up. Well, I mean, they just showed it on CBS. What's I know worse? you don't have to say it. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Yax is a eighty percent free throw shooter. <sighs> well, how about that? UAB among the tournament teams has made the third most free throws, only behind Florida and Grand Canyon. Massive one coming from Yax. UAB will get another possession. There's 43.4 to go. Nice. Yaks makes them both. It's a one-point game. What is the timeout situation here? AK's only got oh, one. Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh. AK's only. We just lost the feed on one TV. I don't know what happened. Yeah, we're not doing play-by-play. -play. This is, is all just reaction. AK's only got one timeout. San Diego State. Dutcher has got two. 30 seconds to play, probably. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, all you want is just a one-shot situation to walk this thing up. Shot, clock, shot clock's probably around nine. Uh, that's going to be on Yaks. Okay, I will say this. Now, it's okay, Lede it's is, a good foul. It's a good yeah, foul. He's yeah. got it, you got to foul that situation. Yep. Yeah. And, and based okay. on his first to second free throw on that last possession. Yeah, this is going to be a two-point game, you think? I, I actually think he makes one of two here. Yeah, so a two-point game. Oh, he pushed off. I mean, even making both, obviously, you got an opportunity. You wonder what Dutcher does at that point. Do you know? Do you uh, let the clock run a little bit and keep UAB from shooting a three? Yeah. I, I really, I, I still can't figure out. I think any time under ten seconds, I foul. But any time it's more than ten seconds, gets a little tricky. Well, I think you know, what gets tricky is you want them to let some time run off. But if you let them get too close, Lance, they can always it. try to jack that shot up. And God, it's so uh, flat and it keeps going in. Try to jack that shot up and 
you know, get the oh, two free throws. They switch that to a UConn. They switch that to a forty-one ten game over there. Way to go. <laughs> we uh, appreciate walk-ons for yeah. having us out here. One hundred percent, we do. Yeah, yeah, but somebody somewhere in there is like, you know, I'm a Stetson fan. Uh-huh. Can we, can I get this one on Stetson? Uh, uh, he does shoot a flat on. free throw. It does twenty seconds to go. Sixty-eight, sixty-five. I still think if you got it down quick enough, you got time for Yeah, but uh, boy, they've taken a minute here. They've taken too much. You got to take the three. But you got to shoot it. And even shoot if he it, hits it, they've left too much time Boom. on the clock. Wow. You rebound. How are you, you not foul him, foul him. No urgency after yeah. the miss. Yeah, yeah. that's going to do it. Got the rebound with about six and a half seconds. Took an additional three off that they could have saved there. Uh, yeah, that's, that's going to do it. Yep. Unfortunately for UAB, boy, we've had two state teams mm. absolutely play their tails off. And unfortunately, lose close games. Yeah. Hope that is not a sign of things to come for the remaining state of Alabama teams who are about to start playing. Um, Troy says San Diego State versus Auburn will be an MMA fight. Yeah, it'll be a battle. It will be, but I think Auburn's a lot more athletic than they are on the perimeter. Ah, boy, I, if I'm Auburn, I wanted to see UAB. I will uh, tell you oh, that. there's oh, no yeah, doubt. No doubt. I mean, San Diego State, they just, they're just they so thick and physical, man, that they can get you just out of your game a little bit. Yeah, and I, I think they could frustrate, you know, both Broom and Williams. Yeah, but I, I mean, think, I, I do agree that, that Auburn is the better team. Yeah, I think Chad Baker, Mazzara, and those guys will be able to, where UAB just mentally checked out after that miss. Well, I mean, it's a four-point yeah, game. There yeah. was nothing they were going to do. I hate it. I hate it. 69-65, San Diego State beats UAB. So, hey, look, the Blazers <sighs> made a heck of a run. Uh, to get there, they played their tails off against the defending national runner-up. Um, I know they wanted to advance. I don't think they have a ton to hang their head about, man. They played hard. And Yax gave you absolutely everything, everything he could. Up. Everything he could, playing with four fouls. Yeah, and, you know, going back to Ladie, hit big free throws down the stretch. And How many you know, did he end up with, LT? 30? Uh, uh, yeah. I think that's 30? right, Jim, yeah. yeah. Yeah, big game. Big game for Ladie. Yeah. Uh, San Diego State, again, back to Brian Dutch, the guy can coach. They yep. were overseeded at a five, and we'll see what they're able to do in the second round. Um, obviously, San Diego State will sit back and pull for Yale, right? What were they? What were they, yeah, they will. Yeah. What were they? Yeah. As well, just like this. Interesting. Yep. And they were much better last year. Oh, my God, yeah. It's not even close. Not even close. Ladie had 32, 11 of 18 from the field, did hit a three. 32? 32 and eight for Ladie. It's a one-man team. 32 hey, and eight. All Americans. One, one-man team. He will definitely play in the uh, – next level but you look at what he did he fouled out jb and davis uh lindeberg uh fouled out christian yeah. coleman the only under height they've got at six nine had four fouls he basically forced 14 fouls on uab how many how many minutes did Dax play uh um, well plays, they don't they don't have it yet it's just going final so usually plays 30 yeah well i mean he played a lot they kept them in there as long yeah, as they know he said a lot though too he yeah. said a lot of the first half too marquette so. is up 84 67 with two minutes to go so marquette is going to close out western kentucky so i'm a horrible loser by the way i do not like to lose the that, Pati- that, by the way the patino family they show they've cut it to 10 new mexico has right it's like the patinos every one of them looks the exact same guys i, I kind girls, of agree with you yeah yeah <laughs> sisters wives i don't know who they are but they all yeah it's like if you went to uh yeah Okay, oh, that's yeah. reeling it back in. I'll break it. Uh, 38-28, Clemson leads New Mexico. Excuse me, 40-28 to now. Clemson leads New Mexico. Oh, UConn up big 42. on stats at 46-13. to Northwestern beat FAU earlier today in overtime. That was the first game added to shoot, 77-65. Uh, Chris Collins, former Duke player, Krzyzewski assistant, has done a pretty good job at Northwestern. That's a tough yeah, game. To, to me, one of those uh, Duke players that I could not stand, he was a Good player, not obviously not nearly as good as his father, Doug Collins. Um, that is – Hey, if you're a Louisville or Kentucky, do you look at Yeah, him? you do, because that is one of the more difficult jobs in all of college basketball. Yeah. You know, we talk about Vanderbilt. It's been difficult getting rid of Jerry Stackhouse. Um, but I think Northwestern is right there. I think it's a more difficult job, and he's done a hell of a job. I, I don't know if you knew this, TG, but there was a time, and I think it was three or four years ago, where the only team of the Power Five conferences that had never gone to the NCAA tournament was Northwestern. And now he's taking them three times, is that right? Three in five wow. years, I yeah. think. Yeah, super impressive. Uh, Colgate and Baylor. Baylor, easy winner there, 92-67. I like the way this Baylor team's playing. I had Colgate. Did you? EG did, did, did not get that 14-3 uh, upset. Was, um, that, was that mascot or no, that blind? Was, I'm only talking about my work one now. Okay. Was that was that your lucky seven one? <laughs> or? Uh, we just mentioned San Diego State beat UAB 69-65. Auburn Yell about to start. We're going to talk some more about that. Colorado, Florida coming up uh, while Auburn and Yell are playing. 
First game of the later slate, right as those games are wrapping, Texas A&M, Nebraska, and an 8-9 matchup. Vermont Duke later tonight, 13-4. Grambling Purdue in a 116 at 625. Alabama and Charleston, 635 on True TV. And uh, that is, of course, a 413. Houston and Longwood in a 116 matchup. I want to come back to this game, Wisconsin-James Madison. I think we've got some interesting uh, things to talk about there. Some belt. Also, TCU, Utah State, and Grand Canyon, St. Mary's. Uh, but Auburn is about to tip. Auburn yell. Um, Lance, I just I go back to Sunday when we were live, and you saw this unveiled. You said, oddly, I just watched yell basketball. This will be a blowout. Yeah, I just don't think they've got the athletes. I mean, the good news is they they can defend. And if Auburn isn't making their shots, they frustrate them a little bit. And Yale needs a quick start, though, because they don't have any depth. And yeah. it really comes down to their starting five, averaging all double figures right now. If Yale doesn't get out to a fast start, I think it could get ugly. I do think that Yale is going to make it interesting for a little bit, but I think Auburn ultimately pulls away just way, way too much depth. Yeah. Dunaway, a uh, key player for you in this one. Um, I, I said yesterday it was Chad Baker Mazzara. I think he is the spark plug, the heartbeat of the team i love him uh and i love the way he uh brings the attitude it's not always uh you know sometimes it's a little chippy yeah, he like talks it. he I bumps like into it. people like uh, but he really can get under somebody's skin yeah. i think that's going to help him down the this stretch. is way 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 uh looking forward but lance will not be in next week lance is on vacation next week for spring break so i want to bring this up because we will not get to talk about this game with you if um if Auburn and UConn both win. But the way Auburn plays, with KD Johnson, who's got a little attitude, Chad baker Mazar, who's got a little attitude, there is nobody that hears stuff more than Dan Hurley. And you got to think his team, maybe that reflects a little bit. This Auburn team probably just enough to get under Hurley's skin and maybe Connecticut's skin as well. well right, look, you got to let KD be KD. Oh, no doubt. And if I am the Pearls, I'm like, hey, you know, hey, respect your elders, but you know, maybe yeah. you want to throw something out there. Auburn fans, I would tell them, if you were behind the UConn bench to get in his ear. Oh, there's no doubt. He'll try to get you thrown out. He, he will, but you can rattle him yeah. enough. I mean, his team's just been so good. It's tough. You know. Play on the emotion. Yeah. Well, I, I, he's a guy that I don't know. He, he hears everything every fan says. Mm -hmm. This guy's an incredible coach. I just don't understand why he spends so much time worrying about the fans. Yeah, it's Internalizing like, it. It's, yeah. it's Kevin Durant, you know, one of yeah, the greatest yeah. players in the world, one of the greatest scorers we've ever seen in NBA history, and he is creating fake – Instagram and Twitter accounts where he can reply. Yeah. And I just, I, I don't At get that. At a certain that. level, it just doesn't make sense as to why you're even yeah. taking into consideration the opinions and thoughts of Marquette covers guys. Our first Lance's lock of the day. That away. Yeah. We, uh, we can't call them the warriors anymore. Can we? I don't know. What are they now? Golden Eagles. They were the Warriors for a while when they won the national championship in 76, wasn't it? Or 77? 77, Al McGuire. Yeah. Back North in the Carolina. day. Uh, that was the merch madness game of the day. And as we told you, we want you guys to get the stuff for free, but I never bought the fact that Marquette was going to lose this game. No, but I wanted him to win. That would have been a fun giveaway to tell people about years from now. Remember that time we gave away all the free merch <laughs> when Marquette lost to the Hilltoppers? Uh, Alabama is still about a nine, nine and a half point favorite tonight, Dunaway. For you, the Crimson Tide must do what to win this game? Mark Sears has to start looking like himself in the first 20 minutes. I've seen a lot of garbage points late in losses. He seems to always get his numbers, but he has not set the tone of the game in the first 20 minutes like he did in most part of the season when Alabama was in first place. Something's been off with Mark down the stretch, and he hasn't had big first halves. I'd like to see him to come out and set the tone early on, maybe have 12, 14, 16 before they go into intermission there. I think that's huge, and I think Grant Nelson needs to stay out of foul trouble. That guy has been just accumulating foul after foul after foul after foul after foul, after foul. Uh, basically for the last four or five games of the season, always in foul trouble. He's got to be different. Will we see Nick Pringle? Uh, I'm going to say no tonight. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see him sitting in street clothes on the bench and then uh, maybe you play him in the next game. Yeah, I would, I would, who, I was, who, who was the receiver uh, Nick Saban's first year? D.J. Hall. Uh, I would D.J. Hall. He would be dressed, and if yeah. I needed him in the second half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I pinch it's over, dude. personally would not play him, but I've got a feeling he is going to – I mean, Nate, for whatever reason, has let him uh, get he's to given this him point. A, he, he's given him a lot of leeway yeah, this he, year. There's he, no doubt. He has. So, by that, hey, look, you make it out here. 
uh, and apologize to your teammates. That was at least yeah. the rumor. Aye. And uh, we're on camera right there. Uh, apparently, if he's able to do that, uh, yep. then I think he'll probably play. But I wouldn't let him play. Yep. Yeah, I just wouldn't. A total of 172 and a half in this one. How you feel about that? Uh, I think I would play the over. I think we're going to have a track meet. Again, I put the over under at 64, 65 and a half uh, three-pointer shots. So I think we're going to get a lot of threes right. jacked up. And uh, I think it's going to be a fun game to watch. So you take the over then? I would probably lean over here. Yeah. Wow. It's a big number. Too. I just haven't seen Alabama play defense yet. No, I mean, it's a I team think that scores a lot of points. I, so I, I told you, I mean, I gave you the stat that Charleston has not lost a game in which they've scored at least 80 points. And I don't see a scenario where Alabama keeps them under 80. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, I, I think Alabama will, will allow them 80-plus, but they will still find a way to win the game. I've mentioned that James Madison-Wisconsin game. The Dukes and the Badgers are uh, tipping off at 840 tonight. Wisconsin, a five-and-a-half-point favorite. This is a 12-5 game that you think is uh, is – Heavy Wisconsin here. You like the Badgers. I do. Chucky Hepburn's a, a, a guard that he gives teams fits defensively. He's a guy that can get it to the rack. Uh, A.J. Store is a really, really good player. I think Greg Gard's a better than advertised coach. Wisconsin seems like one of those teams every three or four years, they get hot at the right time. I thought they were hot going into the Big Ten tournament. They almost pulled it off, almost beat Illinois on Sunday. But I like this Wisconsin team not only to win this game today. I think they're undervalued. I think they win a couple of games. And I think they ultimately play Houston in the Sweet 16. This is the upset today. This is the big you think upset. JMU? Yeah. James so Madison. You're going with the Dukes. Yep. I'm going with the Dukes. Yeah, the Dukes. All right. You're on an island by yourself on that one. I'll I got, take it. I got I like Wisconsin, that. too, though. Yeah. Uh, TCU, Utah State tonight. TCU, a four point favorite. How about this Grand Canyon St. Mary's game, though? If Alabama is able to advance, they get the winner of this game. St. Mary's a six point favorite. I've picked Grand Canyon to win this thing. I think the interesting thing is Grand Canyon plays much closer to the style Alabama plays. So it'll be interesting to gauge what they do against St. Mary's, whether they win the game or not. Yeah, we were talking about Scott Drew, Baylor's head coach, his brother Bryce Drew, the head coach at Grand Canyon, who had one of the more famous shots for Valparaiso 28 years ago in this tournament, knocking off Ole Miss. Uh, they do play a fun style, the Antelopes do. I just don't think they match up well against St. Mary's. I like St. Mary's here. St. Mary's too good defensively. But if you are Alabama, you want Grand Canyon winning that game. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you'd rather play Grand Canyon. That's a much better style for you to face uh, than what St. Mary's does. Real quick, before we wrap up here, Auburn uh, tipping off in about the next 10 minutes or so. I've uh, got some look-ahead lines or, or some official lines. They're not even look-ahead lines, but official lines for Saturday's games. And, and Dunaway, I've already, I already know one of these stands out to Lance. Uh, oh, is that mine? Thank you very much. Another Diet Coke. She knows me well. I burned through these things, EG. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you do. Um, Dayton, Arizona, Arizona, nine and a half point favorite over Dayton. That's not the one. Okay, I'm going to save the one that Lance is interested okay. in. I've got Dayton beating Arizona. I thought this number would come a little under double digits. Uh, I think Dayton can match up with Arizona. I like the Flyers here. North Carolina, Michigan State. Uh, on the betting line, North Carolina is a four point favorite. That's a one seed playing Michigan State was an eight or a nine. I can't yeah, remember which. They were nine. Nine. One nine game, yeah. and they're only a four point favorite. That that's, that's that seems like a skinny number. That's a scary number for yeah. Carolina. Is yeah. that a Tom Izzo number? Lance? Well, yeah, I think it's two things. I think North Carolina is the least valued one out there, and I think there's a brand that comes with Tom Izzo, especially in this tournament. So, you know, I think you you probably equate him to two and a half, three points, just based on reputation. Um, I like Michigan State here. I think they beat North Carolina. Are UConn this good, guys? Uh, yeah. well, yeah, but they're playing Stetson. The Donovan uh, Klingon kid is just, he's a legit 7-2. He is so much better. He was good last year, but he is great this year. Washington State, Iowa State. Iowa State is seven-point favorite over the Cougars, a team I know you like, Lance. I do. I like Washington State a lot. I've got Washington. I've got Iowa State and Washington State. I had them in this matchup. Um, I've got Washington State winning this game. I wish that number was a little lower. I thought it would come out around five just because of the lack of offense from Iowa State. Um, this will be a really good defensive matchup. I think. I've got in my bracket Washington State winning. I don't know if they can, though. Um, gun to head, I would say Iowa State wins a game. NC State, Oakland. One of these teams is going to be in the Sweet 16. NC State, a six-point favorite over Oakland at mybookie.ag. Yeah, I like NC State, at least right now, and minus the points. They are red hot. Dunaway, Tennessee, Texas. Six and a half, the balls in the Rick Barnes Classic there. Uh, I think Tennessee is a good team, better, better than Texas, and 
you know, unless they just have a bad Dalton Connect game, then I, I, I like Tennessee to win. If Texas plays like they played last night against Colorado State, I think Texas will win this game. I've got Tennessee going to the Final Four. This has become a dangerous game. I didn't think we would see Texas in this matchup. Illinois, 10-and-a-half over Duquesne. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah. I told you guys I wasn't going to doubt Duquesne anymore. Illinois is about to curb stomp them. I'm not going to doubt them anymore, but it's yeah. Illinois is about to run them out of the gym. This Illinois team, so. you know, for a minute, it looked like Moorhead had something for them. Yeah. But the way they played in the second half and the way they cruised through the Big Ten tournament, I think Illinois got a really good shot of, of getting to Phoenix. Way earlier when we started this show, somebody was talking about Brad Underwood for the Kentucky or Louisville if, job. If I could reset my final four, I would have Illinois in the would final you four. Now? And that's just off a of Moorhead State win, but yes, I would. And who would you take out? UConn. You take out UConn? Someone's going to have, much like I told you guys with Caitlin Clark and Iowa, they're not going to make the Final Four. I don't I don't think UConn's going to make this Final Four. Brown, uh, would you take UConn out of your Final I Four? I would not. I like them. Okay. I mean, I was going to allow both of you to, to, oh, to no. take UConn out if you they're, wanted they're to. Only 30, yeah, yeah. They're only up 33 and a half. I know. I was going to allow both of you to take UConn out and replace yeah, it you if are. you wanted to. Yeah, you are. Two more games, real quick Oregon and Creighton in the Dana Altman Classic. Uh, he's coached uh, – coaches Oregon now. He used to coach Creighton 5 is what Creighton is favored in this game. Oregon knows how to get to sweet 16s. I like Oregon here. Yeah. And I'll, I'll go the opposite side. You're going to take Creighton. I got Creighton yep. in the national championship game, so that would be a devastating loss for me. Yeah, but here's – In here, that case, I'm cheering for Here's the one I saved. Gonzaga and Kansas. Dunaway – uh, just knowing – you know Lance knows the point spread here. Have you seen it yet, Dunaway? I have not. So, but, give me what you think it is, Gonzaga uh, and Kansas. I would say Kansas two and a half. Gonzaga at mybookie.ag right now is favored four and a half over Kansas. Wow. Yeah, that's the way I would play it, man. I would take the Zags all day. I got them, I got them advancing. I Pre-bracket on my only bracket, I've got shut Gonzaga up. moving the way out. But you I'm watch, so getting tired of how many times you tell me to shut up. If how you many times I told you to shut up? Three times in the last the four minutes. games yesterday, this kind of <laughs> makes sense. I've deserved them all. Taylor. I've deserved them all. But no. let's also not forget that that Kansas gave up 16 threes to Sanford. They turned it over 18 times, and they were up 22. Yeah. And, you know, they had, I think, 12 turnovers in the first half. They were still up 10 there. This is still a really talented Kansas team. And when you've got a special player like Hunter Dickinson, He's just a really, really difficult matchup. I do think Gonzaga looks like the better team right now just because of the lack of depth for Bill Self's squad. Uh, but I think it'll be a, a hell of a game. Um, I thought Kansas would come out about a one- or two-point favorite. So this surprised me. I did see when it opened at four and a half. It went all the way down to one and a half. You're telling me now it's back to four and a half? I see it at four and a half at mybookie.ag. It, so it went all the way down to one and a half, and it's moved back that much? Yeah, let me that, uh, That's uncommon. When, is let me it check not? another another well you can't i'm just saying it my bookie.ag right now i just refreshed it lance so i'll give you the most updated line uh gonzaga four and a half uh total of 151 and a half for that game no change by the way in alabama still a nine point favorite auburn is about to tip they're a 13 and a half point favorite that game tips in about 15 minutes from right now is the updated start time for that back if you're back to uab as they get ready to uh, do their post game out there in spokane the it's hard to do post game locker rooms in that situation like Taylor's having to do. Yep. But Not really, I, really, I think your focus has to be on it was a championship yeah. season. Your yeah. first year in the American, you guys are the American right. champions. And it's where do you where do you see the trajectory of this team going from yeah. here? And well, for some of them, they won't be here. But right. but for what you've accomplished, you sort of paint planted the flag in the American right. UABs in this new, con new conference. We're the champions. We're going to be here. Yeah. We're not going away. The championship's got to, going to go through Birmingham. You got to, you got to, you got to count UAB in every year to be a program in the American. I think that's the legacy of this. Yeah. Team. I think that that's what you're going to focus on because it, it wasn't for lack of effort by any means. Yeah. And, um, Just a, 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 I, I call it a, a successful season yeah. for Andy and them. What about you guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Made the NCAA tournament. Now, they, you know, I mean, they were four and five to start the yeah. year. Yeah. This was kind of a rebuilt team, which you're going to do a lot of that now in this day and age, but a uh, rebuilt team and they made the NCAA tournament. You know, at some point, Andy's obviously going to have to advance. I would say right now, just as far as it's, it's a little bit different because of the teams that are in the conference, but just as far as perception of the program, mm -hmm. I think Andy's got it back to where Mike Anderson had it. Locally, I just mean in Birmingham. Now, I'm not talking necessarily nationally. I, th I think just oh. the perception of the program. Now, Anderson made a Sweet 16 run. I get all that. I think AK has kind of got the perception back of this is how quality the program is to where Mike Anderson had it. Do you just, Jim? You seem like you grimaced a little bit. I did not grimace. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't. I don't feel 
that yet. Yeah. I think he can get there quickly. Yeah, I mean, you just can't erase that run Mike yeah. made, but it was such a flash in the pan so quick. Yeah, I mean, that happened really, really yeah, quick. And, and Andy has won over 20 games um, and now changed conferences into a much tougher conference again, sort of back to the conference Mike was in. Yeah. Uh, that was a really tough conference when Mike was here. Um, multiple big big leagues. I just think it was important, so important for Andy this year to do what they did. They had some big wins. They beat Memphis. They beat Florida Atlantic. They got some folks back into Bartow. Then they go to the American. They win the conference championship. They bring that trophy and that net home, and then they're in the NCAA tournament. And we talked about this uh, even last night. The line is, for me, NCAA tournament, it's a good year. You made the tournament. Now, you know, it gets it gets only better after that. But yeah. the minimum of a good year or bad year is, am I in the NCAA no tournament? Yep. And especially when you have to win your conference tournament, that means you're a champion. There's not many people that have confetti fall on them in the course of a basketball season. And UAB had that happen. It sucks when you lose. But as we said last night, again, 68 teams start this tournament and only one win their last game. All right, uh, it's going to do it for us uh, from Walk-Ons. Auburn getting ready to tip in about 10 minutes. You can watch that game here at Walk-Ons. Lance, three great locations in the Birmingham area to watch the whole tournament. Yeah, the one we're at right now on Highway 119. There is one in Hoover, and there is one in Trustful. Stop in and get some of the best Cajun flair bar food you ever have at a sports bar. Just incredible stuff. We went with the tuna bowls earlier. Great burgers. You had the po' boy. Yep. Ice cold beer all over the place. I was drinking Bud Lights. Uh, but come out, TVs. Everywhere, not a bad seat in the house. You're going to absolutely love walk uh, This was the first one in the area, I remember, before the stadium trace yep. and now the trustful one. And I remember when uh, – because I used to live just right here. And when I heard, oh, it's going to be a walk-on there, and I would drive by <laughs> for no reason, just check the progression. And I was like, man, they have cleaned off the land but have, have not started building. And then when, I remember you came, I believe, Lance. I know I came. They had a groundbreaking out here for it, and I was here for the groundbreaking. That's how much I love this place. I was at the groundbreaking, a tent about where Brown's car is parked. Did the car here. get stuck in the uh, my car? It was muddy. Yeah, I, I didn't get in stuck, but uh, it was the Ram truck. I had to yeah. the tires. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you for joining us. Uh, we will have reaction. Are you going to be able to get reaction after Auburn? Yeah, going to do that after yeah, Auburn. Yeah, I'm going to do the Auburn reaction show, and I'll have reaction after Alabama tonight. So. Uh, Make sure you follow us, set your alerts so you know when we're live at Next Round Live. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube haven't subscribed yet, do that, set your alerts so you know when we're live. And follow us on all social media. A little T, you got the coverage of UAB that will be coming out there at Next Round Live on Twitter and Facebook, Next Round Live everywhere. All right, enjoy the uh, rest of the day. We'll talk to you after Auburn and after Alabama tonight. Thank you for joining us at Walk-Ons 280 and Grand.